After years and years of answering questions about immigration to Spain, it is very clear to us that there are a series of frequently asked questions that come up time and time again. We are publishing this video in an attempt to answer most of them so that you can arrive in Spain with peace of mind, knowing that you have the immigration requirements completely under control. Hola, ¿qué tal? Hello. I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information, insider tips, and our very own travel guides. The questions we are going to answer today relate to Spanish immigration control for those who come to Spain for tourism. For questions of study, work or family reunification, the recommendation we always give is that you get in touch with the nearest Spanish consulate, as we are not specialists in these matters here. Whether you need a visa to visit Spain depends on your country. Visas are not required for citizens of many important countries in the world, including Australia, Canada, Japan, New Zealand, Malaysia, Singapore, South Korea, the United Kingdom and the United States, as well as most Latin American countries. The list is long and you can consult it in a link that we will put in the first comment under the video. Visas are required for citizens of countries such as China, India, South Africa, the Philippines and most African countries. If you need a visa, you will have to apply for it through the near Spanish consulate in your city where you will be informed of its specific characteristics. Everything we are going to describe in this video applies to citizens of those countries that do not need a visa to visit Spain for two. You can stay in Spain for a maximum of 90 consecutive days. The total over a year cannot exceed 180 days. You do not need a visa, but you will have to meet four basic requirements a valid passport, a return ticket, proof of where you will be staying and proof that you are traveling with the money required by Spain. We will now answer a torrent of questions related to these requirements. Your passport must be valid for at least three months from the date of departure from Spain or Europe if your trip includes other destinations. If your flight home is on 1st January, your passport will have to be valid until at least 1st April. Another requirement related to the validity of your passport is that it cannot be more than 10 years old. Can you carry all those documents that you will be asked for at the immigration desk and that we are going to talk about next in electronic format on your mobile phone, on your cell phone? The use of mobile phones is not allowed in the immigration area. So the best thing to do is to print out all these documents at home, put them together in a small folder and present them at the immigration control if you are asked for them. What if I don't go straight back home is a frequent question about the return ticket, which we have seen is one of the immigration requirements. What happens if you arrive in Madrid, for example, from New York, and your return ticket is not to New York, but for example, to Istanbul, where you are going to continue your journey? The immigration officer wants to establish that you have not come to Europe to stay irregularly. If you don't have a return flight home from the entry point in Spain, if you continue on to another country, they probably want to see your full itinerary because if you are on a tourist trip, at some point, from somewhere on the planet, you are going to go back home. 
in the case of hotels, proof of booking is sufficient, either issued by the hotel itself, in the case of direct bookings, or by an accommodation booking platform, such as Booking.com. In the case of Airbnb and similar platforms, the booking issued by the platform is also valid as proof of accommodation. If you are staying with friends or family, you will need to present a letter of invitation, which will be discussed in a second. No, it's not a Spanish immigration requirement. The reservation does not have to be paid for. It can be a reservation that it is paid for at the hotel itself. This is a great idea for those who like to travel on the spur of the moment, but the current Spanish immigration rules do not allow it, and not being able to prove where you are staying every single night of your stay in the country is reason enough to deny you entry to Spain. If you're traveling with your partner, a family member or a friend, go through immigration together. And if you are asked for proof of accommodation, indicate that it is in the name of one of the people traveling together. There is no problem with that. We have been asked about people traveling separately on different flights who have the accommodation reservation under just the one name. That can be a problem at the immigration if the name on the reservation does not match yours and the other person is not traveling together with you, that could create a complicated situation. We would avoid it. Those who are doing the Way of St. James, the Camino de Santiago, usually do not know where they are going to sleep each day. Spanish immigration opens an unwritten exception in this case, due to the specific peculiarity of the pilgrimage route. But in order not to have any problems, and if you are going to do the Way of St. James, be sure to comply fully with the remaining requirements. In addition to having accommodation booked in Santiago at the end of the route, and make sure as well there is no doubt that you are a genuine pilgrim. The Carta de Invitación, the letter of invitation, is a requirement of the Spanish authorities for those who are going to stay with friends or family. And no, your host cannot write this letter in his own handwriting. Your host will have to go to a national police, Policía Nacional, station in their city of residence to obtain this document, called in Spanish Carta de Invitación. It is a cumbersome procedure and there is a fee you have to pay for it. But the only letter of invitation accepted by immigration is the one issued by the national police. Be careful, because in addition to involve red tape, it can be a lengthy process, taking up to several months. Don't leave it to the last minute. Some people apply for the letter of invitation too late, or the procedure is extraordinarily delayed, and they do not have time to receive the original letter at home. Spanish immigration is very clear about this, only the original letter of invitation is accepted as proof of accommodation. A printed copy at home has no legal validity. Your host will have to send you the original letter of invitation by post, snail mail, so that you can show it to the immigration control if they ask you to do so. One of the immigration requirements that raises the most questions is the proof of availability of economic resources. In other words, the requirement to prove you are traveling with enough money. We will try to answer next a good number of those questions. 
Spanish immigration requires that you can prove that you have access to a minimum amount of money. This amount, in the specific case of Spain, is linked to the minimum wage. And every time the minimum wage goes up, that value also goes up. Here in the channel, we try to report every time there is a change, but to check the up-to-date amount, you will have to check the link that we are going to put in the first comment below the video, where you can see in an official source what the updated value is. Right now, immigration demands that you prove you have an amount of 113 euros and 40 cents per day of stay, with a minimum of 1,010 euros and 60 cents. What is this minimum? Easy to explain. Multiply the number of days you are going to stay in Spain by 113. If the resulting figure is less than 1,010, you will have to prove 1,010. If it is more, you will have to prove the result of multiplying 113 by the number of days. An example where this minimum applies. A person staying for six days. Six times 113 is equal 680. You will have to prove 1,010, which is the minimum amount. This minimum amount is mainly intended for those who are coming to Europe for very few days, which is not a common practice among travelers. You can carry that amount in cash, there is no problem, but it is not advisable to travel with large amounts of cash. You can prove to be in possession of that amount of money, part in cash and part with bank cards. Or you can prove everything with bank cards. This is a somewhat confusing issue because the impression left is that the Spanish authorities have not adapted their instructions to the age of digital banking. The website of the Spanish Ministry of the Interior states that means testing can be done with credit cards which must be accompanied by a bank account statement. Letters from banks and internet bank statements will not be accepted. What is essential if you are going to use a credit card to prove you have those funds is that you show an official printed statement of your card showing the credit limit it has. In the case of debit cards, it should be an up-to-date account statement showing the available balance. I know this is an issue that causes a lot of confusion and we can only give guidance here based on the information available on the internet. But the immigration authorities have the final word. If you have any other doubts on this specific point, we recommend that you address them to the nearest Spanish consulate in your country, as the information we have does not allow us to give any further clarification beyond what is stated here. The amount you have to prove is calculated in euros, but you can submit banknotes and card funds in other currencies such as dollars. The official exchange rate will be used to calculate their equivalence in euros. When it comes to proving the available funds, one member of a couple or family can prove the funds of other family members traveling with them, as long as their card has sufficient credit to justify the minimum required for each person traveling with them. Yes, no distinction is made between adults and minors. The proof of available funds does not depend on any other requirement. Whatever expenses you have incurred for your trip, you will still have to prove the minimum amount. You cannot deduct the amount you have paid for, for example, hotels or attraction tickets from the total amount you have to prove. Let's now move on to a series of queries on various issues. Immigration is always done in the first European country you arrive 
in. If, for example, you fly from Toronto to Paris and from Paris to Madrid, you will go through immigration control in Paris and then there will be no immigration control between Paris and Madrid. If, for example, you fly from Singapore to London and from London to Madrid, you will do transit immigration in London as the United Kingdom is not part of the European Union and then immigration again on arrival to Madrid. If you are only going to make a connecting flight from Spain to another European country, the immigration officer may ask you for the requirements of your destination country, not those of Spain. It is worth noting here that contrary to what many people think, the immigration requirements of European countries are not the same. The letter of invitation, for example, is more complicated to obtain in Spain than in other countries. So find out what is required in your destination country and bring the documents required by that country. If, for example, you are flying from Miami to Madrid and from Madrid direct connection to Paris, you will have to carry the documents required by France. However, be careful because if you are traveling through several countries and Spain is among them, for the days you are going to be in Spain, you will have to comply with the requirements of Spain. And for those days spent in other countries, the requirements of each of them. If you are going to another country, such as France, in the example earlier, you do not need to have the documents translated to Spanish. If you read information related to immigration in Europe, sooner or later you will come across the word Schengen. What does it mean? Schengen refers to an area of free movement of persons within the European Union. This zone includes almost all the countries that are part of the European Union, with a few exceptions such as Bulgaria, Cyprus, Ireland and Romania. Bulgaria and Romania will enter the area during 2024. Some non-European countries are also part of the agreement, such as the Vatican City, Iceland, Monaco, Norway, San Marino and Switzerland. Within the countries that form part of the Schengen Agreement, there are no permanent immigration controls. Please do not take the fact that there are no permanent immigration controls on travel within the European Union to mean that you can forget about complying with immigration requirements. We have seen enough of impromptu police checks when leaving the plane, asking for everyone's papers. And Cecilia, the other half of this channel, who is a resident in Spain, was stopped by two plainclothes policemen inside Barcelona airport after collecting her luggage to ask her for all her documents. If you have a passport from a country that is part of the European Union, you can freely enter and leave the countries that are part of the Union without having to meet the requirements we talk about in this video, which apply to non-European Union citizens. If you are traveling with your partner, a friend, family members or minors, you can go through immigration together, especially if the documents related to the trip, as mentioned earlier, are in the name of one of the persons in the group. For example, a couple of friends staying in hotels, but whose hotel reservations are all in the name of one person. A very frequent doubt comes from couples and travel partners where one has a European passport and the other one does not. We are always talking about tourist trips to Spain. Here's our opinion. We've seen opinions that recommend the contrary of what we recommended. Our recommendation is that you go through the non-European Union lane so that the person with a European passport waives a privilege they have going through the fast lane. If you go through the European Union lane, the person without an European Union passport takes advantage of a privilege that he, she does not have. 
what about ETIAS? I know that ETIAS, which will be a future requirement for immigration in Europe, worries a lot of people, partly because there is an army, an industry of YouTubers making videos about an issue that has no date yet to come into force. Really, we are amazed at the number of videos that have been published giving details about something that does not exist and has no date to exist. We've never liked scaring people to gain video views and here we will repeat what we have always said. There is nothing concrete to report about ETIAS beyond the fact that it has been postponed countless times and that it is estimated to come into force no earlier than 2025, a date that can certainly be postponed once again. And of course, you know, the moment ETIAS starts to be enforced, you will have a very detailed video here on the channel, but not before that. Health insurance, which some sources refer to as travel or trip insurance, is an issue that generates confusion, partly due to the lack of rigor in reporting by some channels and websites. Spain has never required health insurance for tourists visiting Spain without a visa. We don't know if it may ask for it in the future, but the reality is that it is not asking for it today. We do not understand why so many channels channels insist on mentioning this requirement. You only have to do your homework, go to the Spanish authorities website where the immigration requirements are detailed, passport, return ticket, accommodation and money, to see that health insurance is nowhere to be found. Nowhere. The next time you see someone claiming that Spain requires health insurance, ask them to point you to the official website where this requirement appears. And if they cannot provide that website, question the quality of the information that source is giving you. Many people use the argument that you need health insurance and then recommend that you take out this or that insurance for which sale they get a commission. The fact that Spain does not require health insurance does not mean that it would be wise to travel without it, but that is a different discussion. As far as the subject of this video is concerned, immigration requirements, the situation is clear, there is no such requirement. And we end with a classic among classics. Someone appears in a commentary saying that my friend, my cousin, my husband, my aunt, my boss, whatever you want to put there, went through immigration in Madrid and they didn't ask for anything. More or less insinuating that why bother with immigration requirements if they don't ask for anything after all. Hang on a minute. Immigration officers don't bother with most passengers. You have to understand that in Europe, immigration control is done on a random basis, which means that the vast majority of people are not asked for anything beyond their passport. The immigration officer doesn't want to see your return ticket, your accommodation bookings or your money, just the passport. But interpreting this random nature as giving carte blanche to breach immigration requirements is obviously a serious mistake that can have unfortunate consequences. And with that, we have reviewed the vast majority of frequently asked questions on immigration. Remembering once again that in the first comment below the video, we are going to put that magic link to the Spanish authorities website where you will be able to consult the updated requirements. There are always questions left out, so if you have any that we haven't addressed in this video, take advantage of the commentary box to ask. If we know the answer, we will try to help you. On the screen, you will now see the list of videos that we have on the channel with basic information to help you prepare a perfect trip to Spain. Be sure to check those videos. They have many important facts to make your trip sensational. See you there.